side. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, so let's jump back in. We'll talk about tradition nine. Uh, AA as such ought never be organized. That's wild. But we may create service boards or committees directly responsible to those they serve. Um, so. I think sometimes we read this and we think, oh, we shouldn't be organized. We shouldn't be having these like business meetings and following Robert's Rules of Order and all these things. And that's not necessarily what the organization part is referring to. Um, sometimes when we think of organization and historically what we have thought as an organization is that there are, you know, dues to fee to pay, yearly dues to pay, um, you know, you get a little membership card or, or what have you, something like that. Um, we don't do that in Alcoholics Anonymous, right? You're a member if you say you are. Uh, so, so we're not necessarily um, uh, an organization in that sense. We also are not this organization, as we've talked about too, where um, you know this regular kind of triangle structure where we have our, our leaders up at the top right, or our um, you know CEOs or COOs, and then all the way down to uh, like middle management, blah blah blah, to the mailroom. Right? We're not an organization in that sense of the of the word. We are completely opposite, where where you guys are in charge, right? Like the AA groups determine how how we do things in Alcoholics Anonymous, and all the changes that get made <coughs> come from from the group conscience, right? From the group. Um, so that's essentially what what that is referring to uh, in there as well. Now I will say there is some discussion too about rotating leadership um, and how it's important that that we continue to rotate, that we don't get stagnant in one one position, um, that we continue on. And the beauty is is that like. I'm super grateful for that rotation, right? <laughs> um, um, I'm super grateful that uh, if something were to happen to our treasurer or for to our coffee person, that it's okay. We have multiple people that, n that can step in at any moment, right? Uh, and just be able to take that over. Also, I think it's good for us because it allows different voices to be at the table. And again, that different perspective to, to um, hopefully figure out best practices, right? Of how we can best carry the message, of how we can best do uh, whatever service position um, that we have. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, I'll pass it on. Thanks. <clears throat> I want you to start with this one because it's not as sexy as the other ones. Oh, oh got it. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. That tracks. <laughs> I was selfish. I was selfish. No, I mean, I am. Um, <laughs> This is really, there is a lot of value in this. Um, and I love what you kind of talked in, in eight that, you know, there is no hierarchy here. There is no like corporate structure. And, and if you're at your first business meeting and you have 34 days of sobriety, your vote counts the same as the guy with 34 years. You know, um, that's the beauty of Alcoholics Anonymous. And um, I, I love in, in Bill's essay, and I hate to be the guy to, to read to you, but I'm gonna. It's just so powerful. Um, and, the re and this really explains why we don't need an enforcement squad or a, a bunch of rules. This is exactly why. Ready? Unless each AA member follows to the best of his own ability or suggested, uh, our suggested 12 steps to recovery, he almost certainly signs his own death warrant. His drunkenness and disillusion are not penalties inflicted by people in authority, they result from his personal disobedience to spiritual principles, right? So like, it takes care of itself. But then talking about the group, the same stern threat applies to the group itself unless there's approximate, keyword, conformity to AA's 12 traditions, the group too can deteriorate and die. So we of AA must, I'm sorry, so we of AA, I threw that must in there. We of AA do obey spiritual principles first because we must and ultimately because we love the kind of love such obedience brings us. And this last sentence is to drop the mic. It's great suffering and great love are AA's disciplinarians. We'd need no others, right? So like we don't need this breathalyzer squad at the front door. We don't need the, you know, the spiritual scorekeeper, thank goodness. You know, we don't have any, you know, I mean, you could, God forbid, be an ax murderer and still be the group business chairman, right? Like, I mean, you know, it doesn't, we have no, if that's the group conscience, you know, uh, hopefully it's not that much of a recent ax murder, but like, you get the point. Like, um, we don't, there is no um, spiritual code of, of demotion or promotion in here. Um, but thank you for sharing on tradition time. Um, <laughs> this is the easy one, and that's why I wanted you to start with nine. Um, 
AA has no opinion on outside issues. AA name will never be drawn in, in to public controversy or into controversy. Um, like I said, most lessons I've learned in here are the wrong way, and, and a lot of them have been subtle. And, and you know, I hope I continue to make mistakes and learn these lessons. I, you know, one of my jobs as an AA member is to continue to be a seeker and to continue to better understand these things. And um, you know, I was, uh, as I told you, I used to go to meetings a lot in D.C. And um, uh, in D.C., politics is like a blood sport. I mean, it's wild. I'll leave it at that. And and but uh, the lesson I want to share with you is kind of you know, it's not just in the one hour of the meeting, you know. Like, I, I, I have to make sure I'm available to be of service to anybody. And I was in this meeting, it was about 10 minutes before it started, and one guy was talking about uh, a newspaper that has a political leaning. And there's, don't take anything from that, there's two newspapers in DC. And I, and this guy uh, that he was talking to was getting ready to ask me to be a sponsor. You all know what that looks like, right? You know, they, you know we do that in stages. It's, you know, typically, you know, they interview you a little bit, and hey, can we talk later, and you know, do you have a sponsor? You know, he's, he's priming the pump, feeling me up, and, um, but before the meeting, he, he said something about, you know, this newspaper, and I said, I wouldn't wipe my butt with that newspaper, and, <laughs> and, and he instantly knew what political party I was from. The guy never talked to me again, <laughs> right? Now, you know, I, I don't think that was the right approach on his part, but you know, on my part, <laughs> well, I'm saying like you know, like I, I don't want to be at a, uh, a point where I exclude half the universe because of my uh, political opinion or any outside opinion, and so I, I got to be really careful in how I run my mouth, you know, to to newcomers, to the men I sponsor. <clears throat> this guy, a, fr a man I very much love, is a great man. He once told me something about an AA speaker, and. Like the next five times I heard this AA speaker, like I didn't listen to a word the guy said. You know what I mean? And it was a total outside issue stuff, right? Like all, of the, like I said, these are all just different guideposts in coming back to how can we best do what we do, and that's carry the message of Alcoholics Anonymous. What are the, you know, what are the 12 or 11 biggest mistakes that we can make? And that's what they should be entitled, right? Our 12 biggest mistakes. Um, you know, and, and how to avoid them to go forward. And that's because, as Shannon said, my life depends on it. Like, it's, it's no joke. You know, if I, I have died spiritually in this program from deviating from these spiritual principles that Bill's talks about. You know, I've, I've been 18 years sober thinking, shotgun or rifle, what's it going to be tonight? Three o'clock in the morning. You know, from deviating from these spiritual principles. And, and the group is the same way, you know. Um, so that's all I have to say on 10. I'll leave it to you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I love Tradition 10, right? Because, again, we've kind of talked about this. It's hard to talk about one tradition and just one tradition without kind of like, it's like um, little arms reaching out, tentacles, whatever you want to call it, right? But um, we've talked about this to some extent already um, in, in the sense that all we, all we need to really focus on in Alcoholics Anonymous is, is like our crippling alcohol problem, right? Um, and that's, that's really, not enough. And the solution, right. yes, of course, of course, but hopefully the solution too, right? Um, but, but sometimes there's this outside noise, right? Whether that comes in the form of politics or uh, whatever, you know, the, the news, any of it, right? Any of it. Um, I know we may not necessarily have poli like politics like DC, right? But we've got sports teams. And, uh, <laughs> and I can, I vividly recall being a newcomer and like seeing someone come in with not, like our rival team's like shirt on or something. And I mean, I would love to tell you that I like did not judge them and I prayed for them. And that's not what happened. I judged them, right? Like, and I didn't listen to anything that they said. Um, Cause how dare you, right? <laughs> um, uh, so, so yeah, so I even have to be mindful of like what I wear at meetings sometimes, right? Because I don't want um, someone to not listen to me uh, if, if that's the message that's going to save their life, um, if just because of, of something that I'm wearing that really isn't that big of a deal for me to remove, right? Um, similarly to, 
I um, uh, can be very involved, and I don't think this tradition either is saying that we can't be involved in, in politics or that we can't be involved in sports teams or uh, any type of other movement, Cultural right? Stuff, yeah. Yes, any type of, of whatever movement. Um, but I think for me, it's important to remember that um, things for me are different than, uh, times are different than when I got sober, right? In, in the sense that everyone has social media now. Uh, and for me, this isn't for everybody, for me, um, it's important that um, I'm not necessarily uh, aligning myself with any particular movement or political party or what have you, even on social media, right? Because I see what other people say, and I will pray for you if I disagree, right? <laughs> You're welcome. And, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, so, uh, but, but I don't want um, that to influence... Um, I don't want that to influence anyone's opinion of, of if they're going to listen to what I have to say in a meeting or not. Um, and, and I don't really participate, I don't really, I'm not on Facebook a whole lot. I don't actually read a whole lot of, of Facebook. I like Instagram because it's pictures. Uh, <laughs> um, but because for that same reason, right? It's, it's very hard for me to disconnect the thought from the person sometimes. Um, and, and so I just choose not to participate. <laughs> And that's an option too, right? Um, but but I love this too. It, and and this, we learned this. Um, I would love to tell you that like AA figured this out all on their own. Um, and really, we we learned it from another uh, organization, the Washingtonians, which the essay right. kind of talks about a bit more, right? Um, where there was this non-drinking group before us, right? We weren't the first, um, and. Uh, and they kind of got into the weeds on, on politics and different social movement issues at the time, and, and it ripped them apart. They went from like zero to 100 in no time, you know, or. 100,000 yeah, members in no time. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and then back in no time, right? So like they grew astronomically um, faster than, than Alcoholics Anonymous did in the beginning. Remarkably fast, which is crazy to think this was like before like social media, the news, like TV, all of that, right? they grew like nobody's business and then they were gone. They were gone. I didn't even know who they were when, until I started reading this and I probably would have no reason to know who they were if I wasn't a member of Alcoholics Anonymous, right? Uh, and, and Bill didn't even know who they were until someone brought his attention and he like went to the library and read about them, you know? So, um, so yeah, so they were gone very quickly when, when, they started, uh, when they started getting diverted from that primary purpose, right? Um, when they started looking else and started maybe thinking that our solution could be applicable to all these different things. Mm. <laughs> you know, um, and potentially it could be, but we're just really focused on, on where we know that it works best, right? Um, we know that it works in Alcoholics Anonymous. Uh, and, and so keeping it here and, and canceling out all of the noise, which is also really wonderful too, because I really love everybody this way, <laughs> you know? Um, uh, and it's not important for me to put you in different classes or, or boxes or what have you, right? Of, of this is how you are, this is how you are. This is how... I don't need to do that, man. We're all on the same team, same team, right? Same, same, wild. Um, yeah, cool. yeah, okay. We'll go to tradition 11. Our public relations policy is based on attraction rather than promotion. Uh, we need to always maintain personal anonymity at the level of press, radio, and films. Uh, and I love this, right? I love this tradition. So we talk about this tradition a lot with social media, right? So we just kind of talked about this a little bit. Um, the long form of that tradition maybe encompasses what social media and the internet is now. We also have guidelines for internet and, and those sorts of things that, um, that are published from the General Service Office. But um, yeah, what, what I think is important in this one is that the question that I ask myself with this tradition is, am I making Alcoholics Anonymous look attractive to the, to the newcomer, right? Am I making service look attractive to the newcomer? Mm. You know, um, do I come back as, to my group as GSR and complain about how long the assembly was and how it was so ridiculous? And I might have felt those things, right? But like, at the end of the day, I did the work of Alcoholics Anonymous, at, at, hopefully, right? Um, and, and participated in, in uh, the future of Alcoholics Anonymous. And so, um, so yeah, am I making, and I think the question that I get asked a lot um, as someone being in service is how we can get people more involved. That's like the single question that I get asked the most. And I would love to tell you like, this is the one way you should do this. And like, that's it, right? That would be so easy. That would be so easy. 
Um, the thing that I always fall back to is this tradition though. Am I making it look attractive? Am I making it look fun? Or am I making it look like something I have to do? Ugh, right? Um, because for me, service is a lot of fun. This is where I get to hang out with you guys. This is half of my program, I feel like, right? Or, or a third of my program, Recovery Unity Service, right? And so um, it's such a huge part and huge benefit um, uh, that I get from from this, right, from giving back. I think when I was first uh, coming into the rooms of Alcoholics Anonymous, I was always afraid that there was not enough. There was not enough of this or that or whatever, right? There was not enough. Um, mm. and, and I've completely like switched my perspective on that. It's like, there's always enough. There's always enough, right? There's always enough um, uh, time for me to, to <coughs> come and, and share my experience, strength, and hope. There's always enough time for me to pick some pick a newcomer up before the meeting. There's always enough time for me to go a little bit early or stay a little bit late uh, and, and help make coffee or clean up or take someone through the through the book, right? For some reason, like God always finds time for for these types of things, and I don't have to micromanage it, right? Like I learned a long time ago that like God's in charge of that. <laughs> <laughs> he laughs when I make my cute little plans and designs. He goes, you're so cute. Um, <laughs> you know? Um, so, so, yeah, but I, I, it's important for me to, to make AA look attractive, I think, um, because it is. Because it is, right? Not, not um, putting lipstick on a pig, right? But um, maybe mm -hmm. lipstick on, like, a supermodel or whatever. So, um, yeah, there's, there's lots of different facets with, uh, with Tradition 11 as well. But, um, but I love that. And I think, too... How this translates into, uh, you know, into my work and into uh, my home life and that sort of thing is is continuing to um, to make those things attractive, right? And the second part of this is where it talks about personal and anonymity at the level of press, radio, and films. It's important for me not to take credit. Is what that tells me too, right? Because I don't know if you were like me, but if we were like this before I got here and we were not on the same team. Um, you, you may not have known this, but I was keeping score. Every time I would do something nice for you, I would remember that, you know? Sometimes I would forget if you did something nice for me, but I would remember when I did something nice for you, you know? Um, and, and I also, if I did something nice for you, I wanted the credit for that. Like, Shannon, you were so great for, you know, taking out the trash or some nonsense, right? Like that, you are, ugh, if only I could be as half as good as you one day, right? Um, I wanted that credit. I wanted that credit, or I wanted to be recognized. And that's not important for me anymore today, right? Um, <laughs> something has happened where I realize that whatever um, accolade or, or whatever time I give or, or whatever, like, that's not me. That's, like, that's God. That's you guys. That's, like, something else. That's not me. Left to my own devices, I'm, like, selfish, self-centered in a room by myself, <laughs> drinking and dying. You know what I mean? Um, so, so, but it's important that I don't have to keep credit or take credit for things. I don't have to take score. Um, I don't have to do that, right? With my husband, I don't have to be like, well, I did three loads of laundry. Can you just like, please do the next three? You know? Um, I don't have to do that, right? Like, it just gets done and it's fine. Whichever one of us can take it at any given point, like, that's great. That's so good, right? I'm so grateful it gets done. Um, so yeah, I think I'll probably, pause there and save some time for you. Thanks. I, uh, <clears throat> you know, this tradition, um, again, it, going back to the conversation of protecting us from our best motives, right? It, it's easy as somebody who early in recovery or early in learning the traditions to say, man, it, why not spread this word faster with social media and I'm going to post my chip on my, you know, MySpace page, or whatever it is y'all do. Um, uh, 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 uh. Is, that, is that what it's called? Is that what it's called? Because <clears throat> think of how many more people I will help, right? That's a really good motive. Um, and I think there's also, so, and the, the, but the principle behind that is that when someone publicly, as we know, the success rate in sobriety is not 100%. Right, so the most famous guy in the world goes on TV and MySpace and I'm an AA, and blah, 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 blah. The next day he's drunk and kills somebody drunk driving. The average person goes, ah, hey, something doesn't work, man. Look at Bill. He just killed somebody. You know what I mean? So there's that aspect to it. And there's also the early aspect when they're worried about being overwhelmed with responses that they couldn't handle. Um, but the, I, I like what you talked about, you know, the the anonymity side of, of, of getting credit. And I, 
Bill really describes two types of anonymity. <clears throat> in Tradition 11, it's his personal anonymity. In Tradition 12, it's, it's spiritual anonymity, which I really like talking about. But, you know, this, you know, I have to, as an individual, watch for this idea of self-promotion. You know, everyone loves applause and wants to be needed and all the rest. Um, you know, I'm the guy that wants to be asked to do something like this, but I really don't want to do it. I just want to be asked. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I don't want to come up here and do this for three hours. And I just want to ask, I want you to ask me, you know. I'll, I'll, I'll be honest, there's three, th and I don't know where this is going, but we got a lot of time, so. Um, there are three things that really make me uncomfortable in Alcoholics Anonymous. One is sponsoring a guy with more time than I do. It always feels kind of weird at the beginning, but that gets taken care of, you know, once you figure out what I'll really just say. The second is using an interpreter to tell your story. That's awful. Uh, if you haven't done it, just go onto a Zoom meeting and you'll see. It's awful. That's very uncomfortable. And the third is doing, you know, kind of leading a tradition discussion. It's just, I always feel kind of inadequate in, in doing traditions, workshops or meetings or conversations. And I remember talking to my sponsor about that and um, I said, you know, I, I, it's just, I'm just not comfortable. I don't, you know, they need to get somebody else to do this. And it wasn't about this weekend. It was about another one. And he said, I'm really glad that's your perspective. And I said, what do you mean? And he said, well, if you ever become an expert, you know, tradition workshop gear, I want you to throw my number away, you know? And that's a really solid point, right? Like, I need to stay a seeker. I need to stay learning in these traditions, um, you know, because I'm, I'm far from being a master of them. Um, you know, and also in Tradition 11, um, in, in Dr. Bob's, um, Dr. Bob and the good old timers, he talks a lot about, you know, we can also equally violate this tradition by, be, by forcing anonymity within the group. You know, if, you know, you know, back then obviously they had an operator, or I don't know, they had phone books back then, but they weren't Googling each other how to find them. But, you know, you can really make yourself unavailable by being anonymous in the meeting. And that doesn't just mean by introducing your last name, you know, by being spiritually anonymous, by, you know, Keeping what's been given to you, you know, is violating that tradition as well. You know, and a guy in our home group last week shared something that really touched me, and I'd been through it, and he was struggling with it, and I'd been through it and gotten to the other side, and man, I, I did not want to go talk to this guy afterwards. I, you know, I'm just being honest with you. I, you know, I'm embarrassed to say that, but I didn't. You know, I wanted to go home, eat some Jenny's birthday cake ice cream, smoke my cigar on the porch. You know, I got there early, I set up the chairs, you know, I don't, you know, whatever, I, anyways. But I did, I went and talked to this guy and it was a beautiful conversation and I got much more from it than he did, you know, but like that spiritual, that's a violation of this, this idea of spiritual anonymity. So, um, you know, I think, um, again, it's, it's one of these things just protect us from our, be our best motives. Tradition 12, um, anonymity is a spiritual foundation of all our traditions, reminding us to, oh, I wanna go back. I love at the end of Tradition 11 what, what Bill says about um, the very last sentence in the 12 and 12. Tradition is a constant and practical reminder that personal ambition has no place in AA. That's pretty clear. In it, each member becomes an active guardian of our fellowship. That's our job, an active guardian. Does not mean policewoman, enforcer, judge, prosecutor, investigator, right? Just a guardian, you know. You know, and so that, you know, what's the difference between those two things, you know, those things? A guardian and an enforcer, you know. You violate the traditions, you're out, you know. I mean, that seems, that seems a very grotesque thing, but like, how many people have we cut out of our lives because they do something we think is stupid, dumb, wrong, you know, you disagree with their interpretation of, oh, that's just, that's BS, you know, I'm not, you know, and you stop listening. You know, how many people have you cut yourself off from in growing? And how many people have you cut yourself off from in, in being of service? So um, I, I, I cherish that sentence, my job, not, not, not to be a, and how he phrases that, an active guardian, not a couch potato guardian, you know, take some calls from sponsees, tell them how they should do things. You know, I, I talk about this a lot. I, I get to run my mouth mouth and AA a lot for some reason and a lot of times in some conferences and stuff people sh you know they have line shaking your hands and stuff and I can't tell you I mean it, 
how much I've heard this. Some old guy, I won't pick on Larry anymore, but some guy that looks like Jeff over here, you know, back in the line, you know, comes to the front and is like, man, I love what you said about sponsorship or taking the meetings and detox or the prisons. I used to do all that stuff. And I, one day I'm going to get the courage to say, I bet you used to be pretty happy too. Right? Like, the used, to, as my friend Tanya says in Maryland, used to bees don't make no honey. Right? Like, so I got to be an active guardian, whether I'm 34 days sober or 34 years sober. Man, I can't just, I don't spawn. I mean, I've heard, we, in my home group, my, uh, my wife and I have kind of changed roles. I've become, this may surprise you, like a little bit more reserved in what I say, a little more quiet, learned to hold my mouth back a little bit, a little bit. And, and she used to be like quiet as a church mouse. Now she's just filters off a lot. And um, well, we were doing an organization uh, meeting for this, our home group, you know, a beginning business meeting. And this guy came and um, 30 years plus of sobriety and said, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't sponsor guys anymore. And my wife said, man, I feel sorry for you. You know, like, so that, I've got a job. Imagine if like Bill and Bob like, got their little booby prize and went on, you know, got their mansion and Mercedes, which they had the opportunity to do and left this idea of carrying the message. So an active guardian. Back to 12, uh, Tradition 12 of uh, reminding us to keep principles above uh, personality. I mean, there's, there's a, a lot here. Uh, you know, I, this idea of spiritual anonymity for me is um, a lot what you talked about of, of not getting credit, you know. Um, and this is something, you know, I, I tr on, on the relationship side, I, I, I try to incorporate in my life. Every day, absolutely not. But like, you know, the not keeping score, the, the doing things that are going to improve my part, my wife, but whether it's your wife or your partner's life, without any credit whatsoever, without any knowledge whatsoever. My sponsor has ingrained in me there's a, there's a spiritual law that you cannot give without receiving, and you cannot receive without giving. And, um, you know, I know that any blessing I have in my life today is just a gift that's supposed to be passed on. I don't, you know, I try to live my life that way, you know. Um, and there's a lot of ways to express that both in, in the program and, and not program stuff in our, in our everyday lives. Um, <coughs> you know, spiritual anonymity is, you can take this to so many depths of like, what I talked about earlier, of the, the not not excluding somebody from your life or not stop listening to what they say because they've done one thing stupid or they said one thing stupid to me. I mean, everyone does that, right? In, our, in your home group, right, there's a guy that every time he opens his mouth, you go, oh. Right? I mean, you might not pick up your phone, but up here, you've picked up your phone, right? And, and, and me too, right? <clears throat> And it's just so, it's just so short, short sighted, you know, um, going back to this idea of, of, of love and service, um, you know, that's what spiritual anonymity is. It's, it's, I love you regardless of what you've done or what you've said. I love you the same, you know, that doesn't, um, always look the same. Um, but I have, I have to surrender this need to be right and this need to be powerful and this need to be effective, um, and this idea of principles above personality is really just a, a, a culmination in, of utilizing the rest of these steps. Um, you know, Bill says in this, in this reading that you know, humility is expressed by an, our anonymity. Um, you know, and I, I, I love showing my new guys and, and I love showing my kids how to do that, right? Like, <clears throat> You know, next time you're in a, a Chick-fil-A and you look behind you and there's a woman with five screaming kids and the car looks like it's from the late 70s, you know, buy their dinner while, as you go through and just keep on going without the thanks, you know. I know there's not many parking meters left, but, you know, my sponsor used to tell me, you know, put your money in an expired parking meter. You know, do something for somebody else that you're not going to be seen or not going to be caught for. Um, and, and 
you know, because I've been the beneficiary of that, right? Like, uh, this is kind of a related story. I, I, you know, you have those little aha moments of where you learn a lesson. My, my partner and I were um, at this fancy lunch, having, having lunch, and, and the service was awful. I mean, just got awful. We were sitting at the bar. You know, it's a pretty pricey lunch, 100 bucks, 125 bucks for the two of us. And, um, you know, the, the cloth napkin wasn't there, and the knives and forks weren't there, our drinks, you know, brasses, well, the whole thing was a complete S show. And he starts getting kind of worked up, and I get started getting irritated. Lunch comes out, it's wrong, his is wrong, whatever. And so he's like, "Let's get out of here." And I, you know, I always paid the bills for the company, and so, you know, I gave the credit card, and 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 lunch was a, about a hundred bucks or whatever. And I tipped her a hundred bucks. And he said, "We got in the car." He said, "What in the hell is wrong with you?" And I said, "Well, I've been over tipped for bad service my entire life, you know, like." And that's the truth, right? Like, if, if, if we all got what we deserved, you know, we wouldn't be sitting here. I, and when, had it happened to me in that brief moment, because my first instinct is zero and some advice on how to be a waitress. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, but like in that moment, I had an opportunity to, to express one or two emotions, right? Like to punish or to try to love. And obviously, you know, the only way that I could be kind and forgiveness and merciful in that in that arena was financially but you know how that extends into you know the home group and and um because I, I i've made as many mistakes in that aa as i can find you know and i'm sure i'll make some more hopefully not the same ones um and i'm so grateful that the men and women alcoholics anonymous have not had this the opposite of spiritual anonymity you know have allowed me to grow at my own pace you know my old sponsor used to say, when I would complain to him about, you know, Shannon being toxic or something like that, you know, he would say, John, everybody recovers at their own pace. I didn't know he was talking to me. You know, I thought he was like justifying, I thought he was justifying my, you know, contempt for Shannon's lack of growth, you know. Um, so, you know, this, is, this part in 12 is not about not using our name on the internet. You know, this is about how we learn to love each other and how we learn to grow as, and stay together as an organization. Love that. That was so good. Um, yeah, I love Tradition 12, right? And I think that it kind of, for me, touches on, on all of the other traditions in some way, shape, or form, right? But, um, but yeah, the first line in this is the spiritual substance of anonymity is sacrifice. Um, and I feel like for me, that's what, uh, when I first read that, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to have to sacrifice like something, right? That I'm going to really want or yada yada. But, but again, to John's point, like, it is only by uh, giving that I receive, right? Similar to the St. Francis prayer. And, and I love how this kind of ties into that in that um, it's not really about me anymore. Mm. You know what I mean? Um, on the spiritual plane, it's, it's not about my personal uh, ambitions and desires. It's about like, again, what's best for the team. Um, and, and I am just a, a fraction of that. Um, and, and so to really think about what's good for other people as opposed to just what's good for me. Um, which was not an ideal that I was like super excited about when I got here, <laughs> right? Um, um, but, but I think, you know, somewhere along, along the lines in the program, working the steps, um, this idea of, of moving from this very material plane to the spiritual plane began to, to take more um, effect, right? And, and started understanding bigger picture things as opposed to like just what is happening in my tiny little worlds. Um, um, but instead of like how my behavior, like it took me some years in sobriety to figure out that pe other people had feelings and emotions. I was like years sober before that like really sunk in, you know? And I was like, oh. <laughs> I'm a slow learner, and uh, <laughs> um, but uh, but but I love this right in the sense that um, the principles that that Alcoholics Anonymous has taught me, and and you know talking about forgiveness and talking about um, this uh, this love that I have for everybody, right? Uh, unconditional love, I think, is is one of the principles that I get from this. One of the lessons that I that you guys have taught me. 
right, um, is, is that I can love you regardless. I might pray for you a lot, right, uh, <laughs> um, but, but I love you regardless, and we're all on, on this same team together, and we're trying just not to, like, capsize the boat, you know, uh, <laughs> and I know we're going to be fine. I know we're going to be fine. Big picture, we are going to be just fine. Um, I'm so excited for that, and, and I love, too, that um, when I look at this big picture, sometimes these, like, tiny little uh, arguments, like these adorable little arguments that my home group has about how we're going to spend like $5, right? Like we're talking about $5. When I'm in the grocery store, I'm like, oh, look, there's Tic Tacs. Let me get a few of them. You know what I mean? Like not even thinking about it. But when it's AA's money, like I am cognizant of how we're spending that, you know? And I'm not saying that that's, that's not right. Um, but I think we need all of those little like conversations and all of those little um, uh, experiences in order to kind of get this bigger picture, right? Um, and, and I would certainly encourage you, if you ever get the opportunity to, um, to, to go to your district meetings or to go to your area assemblies or to, to go to international conferences, right? Like, for me, those were some of the biggest spiritual experiences I had because I saw how little I was, right? AA doesn't need me, but man, I sure as hell need AA, right? Um, uh, and, and I love this idea, too, that regardless of whatever your personality is, like, I'm going to love you anyways. And the thing is, too, right, and this kind of goes to resentments, but, like, what AA has taught me is that I can, I can uh, disagree with you without being, like, a real such and such. You know what I mean? Can you tell I have kids? Uh, <laughs> um, I can disagree without being, like, a, a real, like, meanie and, and uh, being disagreeable, right? Uh, I... When I first got to Alcoholics Anonymous, if, if we disagreed about something and I didn't like you, I was not shy about that. <laughs> you know? um, um, thankfully, I think now I can, I can have this unconditional love for you and still disagree with you and still realize that we're on the same team, and that's okay, right? That is okay. Um, I don't have to um, agree with, with everything that, that everyone says. That's fine. I can make my own decision, and I don't even have to make my own decision about whatever it is today. I can pause. I can pray about it. I can talk to my sponsor. I can talk to people, right? Um, this idea of consultation. What? Twitch before, guys. Okay. Uh, <laughs> see what we did there? Um, you know, I can do all of these things that these principles have, have taught me to do to be able to, to work the best way with, with you guys, whether that's in the rooms of Alcoholics Anonymous, whether, again, that's at my job, at my home, any of those things. Um, uh, but to be able to... to Make it not about me anymore, right? I think that's like the biggest thing that this tradition tells me about, um, this idea of humility, that that's really like, I can never get enough of that in anything that I do. I'll never have enough humility, but that's what I strive for, right? Um, uh, and, and the only way that I get that is by continuing to, to work with you guys, you right? Like to continue to work these, these principles, to work all 36 of our principles, right? Um, uh, and, and giving back again, like I think service in any shape or form, um, maybe beforehand or something, right? Like I, I vividly recall going to like treatment meetings or something like on the way there, I'd be like, man, I just don't want to do mm -hmm. this, blah, blah, blah. I just don't want to do this. I'd rather be like watching Netflix or whatever. Um, but whenever I leave there, I'm always so incredibly grateful. I'm so incredibly grateful. Um, and, and so whatever happens in that one hour, right, like whatever spiritual experience happens in that one hour, um, it's, it's life-changing. It's just life-changing for an alcoholic like me. So, um, yeah, yeah, it's just not about me. It's not about me today, and I'm so grateful for that. It was about me for a long time, <laughs> and it didn't work out for me. So, um, so yeah, yeah. Thanks, Shannon.